saying with tenacity, give me some light in this house. Come on, wake everybody up. Just shake yourself. Take off every spirit of heaviness and put on your garment of praise. Come on, God's going to do something great tonight. I've got an illustrated sermon, I think. I really have a word for you. It's, it's not, at first it's going to make you squirm a little bit, but by the end you're going to be good, all right? So uh, just slap somebody, say it's okay, everything's going to be good. All right, let's say these with confidence and assurance. Ready? Confession number one. Now watch what I'm saying. Confession. Ready? We pull down every thought and imagination in hearts and minds that are contrary to the will of God for our lives. Confession number two, we destroy all forms of errors, statements, and actions that create errors. Let the Lord reverse every error in our lives in Jesus' mighty name. Confession number three, we destroy every snare operating in our lives, emotional, marital, financial, and any other area of our lives. Let the Lord break us out of every snare in Jesus' mighty name. Confession number four. Let the Lord override every evil expectation that is assigned to hinder our destiny in the mighty name of Jesus. Confession number five. Now, O oh Lord, grant us the grace and the will to pray at all times and in all types of prayer according to your will in Jesus' mighty name. If you come in agreement, put your hands together and say yes. Remain standing, go ahead and get your Bibles out and turn with me to Mark chapter 11. A few things I want to talk to you about prayer. Now you think we'd all know prayer and it, it, it would just be such a simple thing. And there's so many different things that we can talk about. Tonight is going to be a night of miracles. Tonight I'm going to give you a prayer cloth, so bring your anointing oil. I'm going to personally pray over you. The Lord's told me to pray over certain situations. And he said that there will be a manifestation of miracles. The Lord spoke to me. So I was up late last night praying and early this morning, and I just believe God's going to do something great. Let me lay a few fundamentals of prayers. You remain standing, and then we're going to go over to Mark chapter 11, because if I had the title, and I'm not a big person on titles, as you know, but we'll talk about when you pray, believe. Everybody say believe. believe. I'm going to ultimately deal with that word believe. Somebody say believe. 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 Because how many of you have ever prayed something, but you haven't seen the answer to it yet? Well, God is faithful. He hears you the moment he prayers that you pray. Now, we know that there are principalities, there's powers, there's darkness, there's uh, wickedness. So there are four quadrants. Well, we've taught that, that the enemy's going to fight against those prayers. And I'll talk to you uh, throughout this prayer series about some reasons you don't have, you have unanswered prayers. But I, I need to deal with something that's fundamental and foundational for you to see answered prayer. Amen? Amen. So somebody say, believe. Believe. So first off, prayer is the invitation to enter into the presence of God. How many of you want to be in God's presence? I love God's presence. In God's presence, there's fullness of joy. Why is that important? Because the joy of the Lord is your strength. So when you get weak and weary, you need joy. Well, prayer is the invitation into God's presence. That's where you get downloaded information, wisdom, revelation, insight. So we want to be in his presence. It is the voice of faith of the Father. So when we pray, it's the voice of faith to the Father. Prayer gives voice to our needs. It's how we petition God. Prayer allows us to come bold into the throne room of grace according to Hebrews chapter 4 verse 16 and obtain help and mercy in time of need how many of you ever need some help how many of you ever need some mercy come on have some needs in your life well prayer is that vehicle prayer is our ability watch this to stand in the gap I want you to understand the importance of this because this is called intercession there are eight different types of prayer I'll teach you a different time but prayer is our ability to stand in the gap and intercede on behalf of nations cities, communities, churches, leaders, families, to see the will of God enforced and override the will of flesh, the will of the enemy. Prayer does that. Think about that. You can change nations by prayer. You can change families by prayer. You, you can't change a person, but God can through your prayers. Prayer is an opportunity to fellowship and commune with God. I believe some people don't really, you know about God, but you don't know God. 
And God wants to know you intimately. He doesn't just want a pastor to tell you about him. It's like me telling you about my friend that lives over in Arizona or something. But you don't know them. God wants to know you. He wants to talk to you. He wants to walk with you. And prayer is that opportunity for you to fellowship and commune. And I can tell you what happens. The minute you go into prayer, like 50 different things start to happen. I'm telling you, your, your phone starts going off. You, you battle with your flesh. I mean, you feel like, oh, uh, you get tired. You fall asleep all of a sudden. Remember what happened to the disciples? But when you press through that flesh, when you press through that wall and you get into that place, it's like you don't want to come out of it. It, it is the sweetest place there is. Prayer increases our awareness of God and his role in your life, acknowledging and giving God thanks and everything. Because when you get in prayer, you begin to understand and, and you have this fellowship and this communion. So it all of a sudden makes you a grateful person because you recognize your dependency on the Lord for even the breath in your body. So you say, why should I pray? Why? First and foremost, because God commands us to pray. So God doesn't suggest for me to pray. He commands for me to pray. Prayer is not an option. Prayer is something that you as a believer must discipline yourself and walk out. The Bible says in Luke 18, 1, that men ought to always pray and not to faint. He says you ought to always pray. So prayer is your believer's authority. All of us, how many of you want, all right, here's the bottom line. There are, there are blessings and curses operating in this earth realm. Poverty is a curse. Sickness is a curse. Death is a curse. I can keep on going. Transgression, sin, all, all these things, they're, they're under the curse. But you've been given authority over all curses. You've been given authority over sickness, authority over poverty. So you go, well, why am I still impoverished? Authority over generational curses. Because prayer is the believer's authority. So it, to exercise that authority, you have to do it through prayer. Oh, you aren't hearing what I'm saying. I'm, I'm going to tie it all together today. We pray because God is our source. God is our sustainer. God is our lifeline. And we absolutely depend on him. We were created for relationship with him. And through prayer, we receive guidance, strength, wisdom, revelation, comfort, power and every resource that you need for life both naturally and spiritually we're to deploy prayer as our arsenal of spiritual warfare the bible says in mark chapter 14 verse 38 watch and pray unless you enter into temptation the spirit truly is ready but the flesh is weak so the way that I prevent myself from falling into the temptation, the trap that I already know the enemy has, is that I've got to watch and pray. So basically, if I don't watch and pray, I can already say somewhere, somehow, there's a setup for me and I'm going to fall into it. And the minute you think you're not going to be taken down, you've already deceived yourself. Because any one of us, I don't care how long you've served God, can be taken down. And so I have to watch and do what? And pray. So prayer is humanity executing the privilege of authority as agents of God in this earth to invoke heaven's influence. So I bring the will of God to pass through prayer. Now let's get to Mark chapter 11, verse 15 through 27. I'm going to show you some things. You ready? Say, bring it on, Pastor Paula. Bring it on. Let's read it together. Let me hear you. It says, we're going to read the NIV, so if you need to look at the screens, it says, on reaching Jerusalem, and this is Jesus. Jesus entered what? The temple area and began doing what? Driving out those who were buying and selling there. He overturned the tables of the money changers and the benches of those selling doves. Let me hear you. And would not allow anyone to carry merchandise through the temple courts. And he taught them. Now watch, he teaches them. Now he taught them that's where every word is important so this was a sermon he's saying something so what we have documented there's a lot more in between each word here he taught them and he said is it not written my house will be called a house of prayer for all nations but you have made it a den of robbers the chief priests and the teachers of the law 
heard this and began looking for a way to kill him. They wanted to kill him because he said, my house is a house of prayer, but you've made it a den of robbers. They didn't just want to, they didn't just say, okay, shut him up and stop teaching him. They want to kill him because now he says, my house is a house of prayer, but you've changed it into something it's not. Oh, you better be with me today. If the shoe fits, you're going to have to wear it. All right. I'm just, the, don't get mad at me. I'm just delivering the message today. Smile. I'm, I'm telling you, it'll go down easier. It'll go down easy if you're smiling through this. He said, the chief priests and teachers of the law heard this begin looking for a way to kill him. For they feared him because the whole crowd was amazed at his teaching. When evening came, they went out of the city. And in the morning, watch this and pay attention. In the morning, they went along and they saw a fig tree. Because this just seems like it's randomly thrown in there. But nothing is random about the word of God. In the morning as they went along, they saw a fig tree withered from the roots. And Peter remembered and said to Jesus, Rabbi, look, the fig tree you cursed has withered. Now watch his response. Because this is where I'm going to take you today. Have faith in God. Wait a minute. What does have faith in God going into prayer have anything to do with the withered fig tree? You're going to find out by the end of the message. He says, have faith in God. Let me hear you. Jesus answered, I tell you the truth. Now, here we go. Here's the, t here's the core of where I'm taking you. Say it with me. You know it well. If anyone says to this mountain, go throw yourself into the sea and does not doubt in his heart, but believes that what he says will happen, it will be done for him. Let's stop right there. Is that red in your Bible? Okay. When it's red, who's telling that? Can he lie? If he says it, is it truth? Is it absolute truth? Yes. Infallible word of God. Yes. All right. We're on the same page. So he says, he says, if you tell this mountain or says to this mountain, actually he says, if anyone says to this mountain, go throw yourself into the sea and does not doubt in his heart, but does what? Believe. Help me work the word. Believe. Say it so loud. Believe. Believes that what he Believe. will happen it will be done for him. So this is impossible because God cannot lie. So now if you get this message today from beginning to end, your life is about to transform. I'm telling you. Verse 25. And when you stand praying, if you hold anything. Oh, I missed the most important verse. Verse 24. Therefore, I tell you, whatever you ask. Y'all are saying this like lazy today. I'm sorry. I need to be, I need to be back in the pulpit for three months. I'm sorry. All right, because you've lost the cutting edge here. Come on, say it with me with authority. Y'all are like, no. Oh. That sounds like the congregation I know. All right, there we go. Let's say it one more time. Therefore, I tell you, whatever you ask for in prayer, believe that you've received it. And it will be yours. Point to your neighbor with your finger. You're allowed to get a little bit of an attitude right now. Say, I'm telling you, whatever you ask in prayer, believe that you've received it, and it will be yours. Go ahead, point your finger to someone. I know your mama said don't point your finger, but just point it with an attitude. Say, excuse me, but, but I've got a word for you. I'm telling you, whatever you ask in prayer, say it. Whatever you ask in prayer, believe that you received it and it will be yours. Slap somebody upside their head, say believe. You can be seated, I got to work it. Verse 25 says, it, uh, uh, you know, forgive when you're praying, which we've already taught forgiveness. All right, the message version is really interesting. It's pretty much the same, but I want to take you to verse 17 and then verse 21 through uh, 24. It says, he taught them, quoting the text, my house was designated, somebody say designated, designated. a house of prayer for the nations, but you've turned it into a hangout for thieves. You've turned it into something that it was not designed for, into something that it wasn't designated for. So he taught them this, and then he goes on, and this fig tree withers, 
And Jesus says, matter of fact, verse 22, the message version, embrace this God life. Really embrace it. Now, that's the same word as have faith in God. Embrace this God life. Really embrace it. And nothing will be too much for you. This mountain, for instance, just say go jump in the lake. No shuffling or shilly shallowing, And it's as good as done. That's why I urge you to pray for absolutely everything. Ranging from small to large. Include everything as you embrace this God life. And you'll get God's everything. And when you assume the posture of prayer, remember that it's not all asking. If you have anything against someone, forgive only them. Will your heavenly father also be inclined to wipe out your slate and clean it of its sins? So we know this. You cannot change the situation. You can't change a person, but God can. And so what, what really changes it is that you move God through your prayers. You bring the will of God to pass through your prayers. We know that prayer is the vehicle. We've been taught this so much. Teach us how to pray. Matthew chapter 6 or 10, well in verse 9, hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, thy will. The decision, the determination, the decrees, decrees, get that word down, decrees, because that means prophetic confessions and declarations. The will, the determination, the decrees of God, thy kingdom come, thy will be done in earth as it is in heaven. Two different words in, right? And it means to superimpose in time, place, order, and position in the earth what has been fixed in state position and order in heaven so what is fixed in heaven you superimpose in earth by what through prayer we know it very well somebody say bring it on pastor Paula bring it on so I'm going to eventually bring you to the focal point of the message today when you pray do what no when you pray help me out Alex do what believe all right somebody say believe so that means when I pray, I pray with expectation and anticipation. Because I'm going to teach you today there's a difference between confession and vain repetition. Because they seem the same because it's a repetitive prayer. But one has anticipation and expectation. And one is just going through the motions. So when I'm praying, I'm praying with faith. I'm praying with anticipation that what I pray, I believe that I've received. I'm going to show you that it's already a future tense of something that's already happened that you're believing God will bring to pass into your life. So, however, there are some notable things that I've got to lay down. So before I can believe and get to it, because I'm going to work on your faith today. I'm here to work on the believe part because a lot of you are just going through. It's not confession anymore. You've lost the faith factor. It has become vain repetition. And when you've lost the faith factor, you don't see results in your prayer. But the devil is a liar because something's about to be activated on the inside of you. Something's about to be quickened on the inside of you. And when you pray, you're going to see results. In fact, that thing that you've been believing God for, before the time you get home, you're going to get a testimony. You see, it, it could be absolute famine today and you can be living in feast tomorrow. There is nothing too difficult for your God. Remember, I already taught you, dig a ditch. You can be out in the middle of the desert and forgot to bring the water. And, and, and you're going, how in the world are we going to survive? How are we going to make it through this? And the prophet said, this is a light thing for your God. Whatever you're facing is a light thing. You just need to believe God. You just need to have faith and anticipation. But I'm going to break down. What does that literally mean? But there's something very important. Now, this is going to be tight before it gets right. You ready? Say, come on. There's something really notable that we have to examine in this vital passage of Scripture because we all like to get to the part. If you believe when you stand praying, then you speak to this mountain and tell this mountain be removed. This mountain shall be removed. And if you believe, then you shall receive what you say. And we all stand on that, right? In fact, most of us quote that part. But we don't quote the part that is before that. So say, bring the front, front part, Paula. Come on, say, bring it on. He says something first. Anytime there's a principle here, anytime you try to change something from its original intended purpose, you end up with a mess. You end up with a, a freak, basically. 
anytime you try to change something from its original intended purpose, it's an absolute disaster. So Jesus addresses this issue. He said, my house, the church, was designated as a house of prayer. Now, I'm going to get on you, New Destiny. I'm, gonna, I'm just going to tell you. We come dragging in here, thinking God's supposed to do us a favor. We come in and say, what's she going to preach today? Who's going to be in the pulpit? I guess I'll stay if my favorite preacher's there. I guess I'll be there if, if this is happening. Y you've got church all wrong. They had church all wrong because you should be here an hour early praying because God said, if it's called church, it's designated as a house of prayer. So you, you wanted the pastor to pray over you. No, you're supposed to be coming in here, fellowshipping with God continually because this is not made. Listen, we thank God. We're getting ready to do a huge community project. We're building out City of Destiny. There's so many things happening that people don't even have a clue of. I mean, so much is going on and we thank God. Our hospital will go up. Our mental health facility will go up. Our drug center will go up. We thank God for our school. We thank God for for our performing arts. We thank God for all that. But I'm going to tell you, the purpose is not for all those things. The purpose for the church is to be designated as a house of prayer. In fact, those things are a result of manifestation of prayer. You aren't, you aren't hearing what I'm saying right now. So he addresses something. And he said, you have taken what was designated as the house of prayer and you've turned it into a den of thieves. So, so what that literally means is a den of thieves there uh, means you've plundered it. You, you've turned it into something that is fraudulent. So why well, I thank God for our auxiliary ministries. If you're here for, for I mean, I know, listen, I've pastored 33 years. I know that they teach you in church growth. You better have your parking lot right. You better have your children's church right. You better have your greeters right or you're going to lose people. If you're here because the parking lot or, or you left because the parking lot went right or the children's program went the best, then, then you've missed what church is because church is not about auxiliary ministry. Church is not about women's ministry. Church is not about men's ministry. Church is not about me raising you up as a PIT so you could get pulpit time. I want to know how many of my PITs that I spent two hours pouring into are here praying. I, I, I'm just asking. Oh, it's quiet right now. Pastor, back in the house. It's good to be home. Because Jesus says the church is designated. So anytime something's designated, this is the purpose. This is the intention. It is a house of prayer and you've morphed it into something it's not. I need somebody who can play a little bit of basketball. Who knows how to play basketball? Clarence, you can you play basketball? Demetrius, somebody, somebody get up here. Somebody know how to play some basketball. Anthony, you know how? All right. Demetrius, y'all get up here. So you ready? All right. So, so, um. You don't, I, you know I'll be whooping you, all right? So, this is a hoop. Anthony, go ahead. What, what are you supposed to do? Demetrius, I mean, come on, guard him, Demetrius. Help, do something. Oh, oh, Demetrius, how did you just let him do that to you? All right. Now they're going to get it on and take my whole sermon, all right? So, so, all right. Go ahead. Do one more. Let's see. Let's see. It's on. All right. Uh-oh. Uh-oh. Oh, almost. One to one. All right. Game over. Called. Uh-oh. Anthony be playing ball. I didn't know. All right. Now, stay down here. I need you guys. You aren't done. All right. You play some hoops, right? So that's a basketball hoop. This is a basketball, right? It's a basketball. Intended purpose to play a game called basketball. That's the intended purpose. Come here. Now, I'm going to give you each something. You're going to still play basketball. Here you go. Go ahead. 
All right, go ahead. That's what is that, Anthony? What is it? It's an egg, right? What is that? An egg. All right. I want you to play basketball. Go ahead. I'm being for real. No, defend each other. Y'all afraid to get a little yoke on you or something. No, I'm serious. Play basketball. No, that's not, uh, play basketball, okay? Bounce it. Now play basketball. Why aren't you guarding him against an egg? No, 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 no. Gu no, play basketball just like y'all were. Guard. I want you to play basketball. I want you to bounce the egg. I want you to play basketball. Okay, I want you to play basketball. Bounce it, Demetrius. Bounce it. Bounce it, Demetrius. Bounce it. Now you're guarding him. Bounce it. Guard him. Don't let him make a hoop. Bounce it. You got he can't play basketball. You know why? Because an egg was not intended to play basketball. Now I'm hungry. And I'm going to take a basketball and I'm going to fry it. I'm going to try to eat it. You know why? This was never intended to be breakfast. And this was never intended to be basketball. Y'all better get ready. You're going to be looking like, come on, funny. That was... <laughs> That was intended, ready Demetrius, that was intended to play basketball. That's how it goes. <laughs> you guys are doing this too good. Now what, what happened? They used something. You know why that was just a mess right there? And you could have even got hurt right there. Thank you, Jesus, for him not getting hurt. Um, because he used something that was not intended for it. Now, if I'm hungry and I have a stove and I cook myself an egg, I'm using what is intended for purpose. Jesus says this, my house is intended and designated. Thank you, guys, for a house of prayer. As silly as that was, you know what we've turned the church into? A mess. You know what we've turned the church into? A freak. Into something that it was never intended for. So, do you know what he says, basically? Come on, guys, let's be real. How do we get crowds? Well, let's see who can give away the most. Let's pour a lot of money into advertising. Let's market. Let's do big business. Hey, why are you acting like, like that's not true? Do you want to know how to build the church? Prayer! Do you want to know how you get laborers? Pray to the Lord of the harvest and you'll send in laborers. So, so I'm just saying, I'm not saying anything. Listen, I'm here to deliver the message. I pray over you. That is my, my responsibility is to pray over you. Your responsibility is to pray in this house for the harvest of souls, for families, for the community, for the nation, for your pastor, for your leaders. You don't want me to really go there. You really don't want me to go there. Because if you're really praying for your leaders, you won't have men and women of God falling the way that they fall. Okay, everybody's going to go like this. It's not my fault. It's their fault they fell into sin. You have a responsibility to pray. You have a responsibility to hold up this nation, to hold up your husband, to hold up your pastor, to hold up every leader, to hold up this house, to hold up this community. So when there's a shooting, it's our responsibility. I'll go as far as to say it's our fault because we didn't build a barrier and a wall because the church was designated as a place of prayer. Thank you. I got three people. I got three people. The problem is we want the results. But we, we've turned it into something that it's not. Come feed me, Pastor Paul. Come make me feel good. Come ordain me. Come give me a title. Come give me a position. Make my kids happy. Give me a fun Sunday so we can get the crowd here. 
Get your butt here and pray. I know it just went all over the world. My Facebook's on right now and a million people just heard me say, get your butt here and pray. Because God's house was designated to be a house of prayer. A house of prayer. You know who to pray for. Pray for your pastor. Pray for Pastor Brad. Pray, pray for Pastor Doug. Pray for Elder Marguerite. Pray for Elder Harold. Pray for the leadership. Pray for your family. Pray for this community. He teaches us what to pray. He teaches us how to pray. And we just sit here going, y'all do more talking on the phone. And you sit there texting more people. If I sit, how many texts you give out, I wonder if you've given that many words to God today. Watch, when you, when, you, when you morph something that was for its intended purpose, Bruce, and you change it and try to use it for something else, just as silly as that looks is as silly as we look. You say, so why isn't the church working? Why, why don't we have the power and the authority like God's word says? Why aren't we seeing what God's word says? Because if we take what was intended for a purpose and try to change it in any way, then we have made an absolutely mess. I call it a freak out of it. Because the blood-bought church of Jesus Christ is the only legal entity in the earth to bring forth to true transformation. So why doesn't it seem like it's working? Because maybe we haven't changed that much since the disciples with their encounter with Jesus here. The intention is my house is designated as a house of prayer for the nations. What happened? You've turned it into a hangout for thieves. The literal etymology is you've plundered it. If the church does not come back to the purpose that God designated as a house of prayer for nations, ethnos, ethnicities, then it will not have the impact and its effect of its original intention. Church works when it functions what it was created to. So there's this little verse that's often overlooked in between morphing God's original intention and when you pray, speak, believe, and you can receive. And most times it's just bypassed. In verse 20 in the morning as they went along, they saw the fig tree and it withered with its roots. And Peter remembered and said to Jesus, Rabbi, look, the fig tree you cursed has withered. So you have to go back to right before I picked up the reading. If you look in verse 12 through 14, the next day as they were leaving Bethany, Jesus was hungry, it says. He's hungry. He has a need. Seeing in the distance a fig tree a leaf, he went to find out if it had any fruit. And when he reached it, he found nothing but leaves. And because it was not the season for figs, and this is where people just bypass it, because I'm going to break that down for you. Then he said to the tree, may no one ever eat fruit from you again. What he's making here is what we call a prophetic decree or declaration. Because your words have so much power, I'm about to show you. And his disciples, because remember, all this is in the context of prayer. And his disciples heard him say it. Now, Adam Clark's commentary says it like this, that this happened about five days before the Passover on which Christ suffered. And the Passover that year fell in the beginning of April. It's been asked, how could our Lord expect to find ripe figs in the end of March? The answer is easy. Because figs were ripe in Judea as early as the Passover. Beside the fig tree puts forth its fruit first and afterwards its leaves. Indeed, this tree in the climate which it is proper for it has fruit on it all year round. So you know what Jesus did? That tree, Doug, had fruit and Jesus was hungry. So when he went to pick it, but that tree did not produce what it was created for in purpose, he cursed it and it withered because it did not fulfill its purpose. What's the purpose of the church? My house shall be called... Okay, we do a lot of good things. It's great we go in the community. It's great we win souls, but you know what? Y'all like, it's up to the church to win souls. and but No, it's up to you as an individual believer to disciple men. They say, yeah, I'm only getting three. My house shall be called. 
So what's the purpose of the church? Pray. I thought we were in the month of prayer, guys. Yes. I thought we were the church. Yes. So, so is the church our purpose? Our primary purpose is prayer. Because it, now, when you get into prayer, you get into eight different types of prayer. Part of prayer is worship. Part of prayer is giving. There's a prayer of worship. There's a prayer of unity. There's a prayer of petitions, a prayer of faith. There's a prayer of agreement. There's intercession prayer. There's all kinds of different prayer. But my house shall be called the house of prayer. Jesus is hungry, goes by the fig tree to eat. It doesn't fulfill its intended purpose. And Jesus says, may no one ever eat fruit again of you. You did not fulfill your purpose. In other words, if you're not fulfilling your intended purpose, you're a waste. You're of no use. So what, why, are we, why are we doing this? Like for real, why are we doing this if we don't fulfill our purpose? I mean, Pastor Derek, I've got a lot of things to do. I'm pretty good at almost anything I put my hands to. I'm, I'm, I'm saying that not arrogantly, but because the grace of God in me. So if I put my hands to it, I believe it's going to be blessed because I believe God in me. The most important thing that I can ever put my hand to is anything that has to do with the kingdom of God. And the greatest thing God gave his son for, I know you think God gave his son for you, which he did if you're born again, because you're saved and you're part of that. But he died for what? The church. Because he wanted a fellowship. The church is not New Destiny Christian Center or First Mark, whatever, or St. Anthony's, da-da-da-da. The church is the blood-bought believers of Jesus Christ. I'm going to keep on bringing it. So the next day they walk by the same fig tree, right? Which is now withered up and dried. And Peter looks and says, look, the fig tree you curse is withered. And it's almost like Jesus ignores him. Now here's what, you, you get excited all over this because I, I got past the hardest part. Now that y'all have digested the medicine, you can get the, you get the, you get the sweet part now. Sandra's just laughing and going, she's back. So what happens here is Peter who always seems to be the person of revelation, comes and says, Jesus, the, the, the tree withered. And it's almost like he ignores it. He doesn't respond with an explanation. He doesn't say, man, that's super cool. He just goes on and says this, verse 22, have faith in God. That's what Jesus answered. Man, the tree withered. Jesus was hungry. The tree was supposed to produce fruit all year long. It didn't. So he cursed it because it was not fulfilling its original intention and its purpose. Peter comes back the next day, walks by the same tree and goes, it's withered. It's shrunk. It, 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 it's, it's down to nothing because it's not producing its original purpose. And Jesus doesn't explain to him or give him a discourse on why it shrunk. He simply responds by saying, have faith in God. Now, here's the crazy thing. Pastor Doug, we think, have faith in God. But the literal translation there means, have the faith of God. Whoa, 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 hold up. Now, Jesus would not tell me to have something that I'm not capable of. So he's not saying, have faith in God. He's saying, have the faith of God. So what he's saying to you is, don't you know who you are? That you as a, a, a child of God have been created in the image of God, which means the resemblance to the likeness with the ability to function. He calls you a little less than Elohim, that you are higher than the angels, but just a little lower than Elohim. Do you understand that? The same spirit that raised Christ from the dead now dwells on the inside of you. So he's not saying have faith in God. He's saying have the faith of God. So what he's saying is it's in you, but you're not activating it. So now he begins to deal with what's going on. He begins to explain to them and say, okay, now let's do an activation discourse. Let, let me show you after I've given you this illustration service. 
Because keep in mind, this entire passage is about prayer. He goes on and he says, I tell you the truth, if anyone says to the mountain, go throw yourself to the sea and does not doubt in his heart, but believes that what he says will happen and will be done for him. Therefore, I tell you, whatever you ask for in prayer, believe, somebody shout believe, believe. that you've received it and it will be yours. So Jesus has now brought prophetic declarations into the realm of prayer and tied the two together. Whatever you say, and he's saying, when you pray. So now he's bringing prophetic declarations. So watch, when we say these declarations, for some of you, they're declarations, what are called confessions. I'm going to give you the difference. For some of you, they're just vain repetition, which means you're just saying it because everybody else is saying it. But others of you have faith and anticipation. And so when you're decreeing it, you already believe and you know that it's going to come to pass. And we're all doing the same thing, but we're not going to all have the same results. Because it's, here's the difference with it. Because Jesus has now brought prophetic declarations into the realm of prayer, and he ties the two together, and he says, if you say, somebody say say, say. to the mountain, and don't doubt. The word doubt means separate or withdraw or stagger. But believes in his heart, which means your mind and thoughts. What he says he will have, that's always the battlegrounds in your mind. Whatever you say or decree will become a reality in your life. Job chapter 22, verse 28. Thou shalt decree a thing, and it shall be established unto thee. By your words you decree a thing, and God says it shall be established through the power of your decrees and your declarations, and shall become part of your life. That's why you've got to be careful what you speak. Because Proverbs chapter 18 says that there is power of life and death in the tongue. The Bible goes on to say that you are judged by your own judgment out of your own mouth. It says whatever you say, basically, you will have. So you go, well, well, I just can't help myself. Then your whole religion's in vain. Go have fun. Get drunk. Party. Have a blast. Because it says if you cannot change, y'all looking at me crazy. Basically, I just told you if you can't control your tongue, go backslide. Live like a hellion. You're looking at me like she is not saying that. I look at Elder Harold or Old always to see my radar if I'm still okay. You know why I'm saying that? Because I'm not saying it. James said it. James said that if you cannot control this little member of the body called the tongue, then your whole religion is in vain. In other words, if you don't have the power through the Holy Spirit to yield yourself and control what you say, then what are you doing? Your whole religion's in vain. Just go ahead and waste your life because you're ruining it anyway. Oh, don't make me go deep. They're going to make me go deep. They're going to make me go real deep. You see, because we think, oh, sin, see, everybody's, I, uh, this was a service. Come take me off, Pastor Paula. Okay, so watch, ready? I'm going to help you get to believe. Because we think the whole thing is, oh, man, sin is going out and sleeping with somebody and getting drunk and getting high and stealing and robbing. And all those have personal consequences. Those are personal sins. They will bring consequences of death into your own life. But if, 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 if I, I mean, please forgive me for using this example, and I do not mean this in any way. Let me give, give me something. If, if you go out, Elizabeth, and you commit a personal sin, all right, I love you, and I, wish, I don't even want to use this example. Let's just say you, you do something against Neil or whatever. All right, you, you kiss another guy. I'm not even going to go there, whatever. Beside him beating him up, all right? You kiss another guy. It, 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 it doesn't affect my marriage. You kissing another guy does not affect my marriage. It affects yours. You brought personal sin into your life. Okay, but if you go out and start gossiping, you go out and start using your tongue, which is an abomination to the Lord. You go out and decide to destroy me instead of restore me. Now you have brought a sin against the body and you have brought destruction where, where you have disunified because you've brought division. And Paul says it's better that you destroy yourself than to destroy the unity of the temple, which he's talking about God's house. So, so when you stand and pray, when you make these confessions, you go, well, I just can't help myself. You absolutely can. Oh, I say, bring it on, Pastor Paul. Bring it on. I got... 15 more minutes to get you there. I'm trying to get you to believe. I didn't take my time. All right. 
See, Sonia said, I'd take my time so y'all get on her, amen? So Jesus says, he who speaks, he will have whatever he says. Listen, I brought a lot of destruction on myself because I said the wrong things. There's so much power in your words. So we must train our lips to say what God says. So you go, what are prophetic decrees and declarations? Because that's where he's dealing with in this realm of prayer. Prophetic declarations and confessions say what God has said in his word about a certain thing. And the most simplest, when you make a prophetic declaration and confession, you're agreeing with God. You're saying the same thing the scripture says, confirming and affirming what God has said. So the Bible divinely instructs us in Hebrews 4.14 to hold fast to our profession and confession. Hebrews 10.23. So let us hold fast the confession of our faith without wavering. For he is faithful that promised. When you hold fast your confession, you're saying what God has said over and over, repeating it until the thing desired in your heart that God promised in his word is fully manifested. The manifested. The key is to confess. It's, it comes from a New Testament word, homo, I can't say it right, homologio, whatever it is. It is a compound word of homo, which means the same, and logio, which means the word. So a more specific definition is to say the same thing as another, that is to agree with, assent, to concede, to profess, to declare openly. So our confession and declaration should always be what God says. So the difference between vain repetition of your prayers is you're, you're just saying something out of routine versus your confession is you have faith because you are declaring what God has declared. So you have the right as a believer to have the authority through prayer that if God says you're the head, you're the head. If God says you're healed, you're healed. If God says you're righteous, you're righteous. If God says the joy of the Lord is your strength, if he says he'll keep your, your mind in perfect peace, I keep going. You've got a whole bunch of promises, 1,050 promises and commands in the New Testament alone. You've got, a, you've got books and books of promises for you and your family and everything and your seed, 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 seed. So Jesus goes straight to verse 24. What things? Let's get into what things. Because I need to know what, what does that say. He says, what things? Or if you go King James, whatsoever things. What things? What does things mean in the Greek? It means as much, as great, as long, and all that. So it means as much, as great, as long, and all that you ask in prayer. So that covers everything. As much as I ask in prayer, as long as I ask in prayer, as great as I ask in prayer, some of you are living way too little. You've been asking God just to meet your need. God wants to be more than just a need meter. God wants to take you into places that you could never take yourself. God wants to exalt you so that his kingdom would be exalted. God wants to use you to change the world. You are an agent of change. You are history maker. Come on, stop limiting yourself in the name of Jesus. As much as, as great as, as long as, all that. I was asking for God for nations when I was living on Bill Moxley Road in a trailer. I was asking God to use me to impact nations, ethnos, every ethnicity, every person, every being. It would take 30 something years later because a day is as a thousand unto the Lord. But God will not fail you. God is is faithful. Woo! As great as, as long as you ask in prayer, watch, and you believe. I'm going to have to work on this one tonight. I know I'm not going to have time. Can I work on some more tonight? Will you come back tonight? And I'm going to give you prayer cloths and I'm going to pray, but I'm going to work on your faith tonight. You believe, all right? Greek, to have faith in, that you have received. Now watch this. That you believe, which means to have faith in. I'm going to work that tonight. That you have received. Notice it's past tense. That you've received. It means to get a hold of. It will be yours. Future. So watch what he's saying. He says, what things, as much as, as great as, as long as all that you ask in prayer, believe, have faith in. That you have received. It's a past tense. It means to get a hold of. It's already that you've received, that it's already done. And it will be yours in the future. Amen. 
So you've got to believe that you've already received it. Which I'm going to work. Faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not yet seen. I'm going to work your faith tonight. I just wish I had time. It says it shall come to pass. That's what it means. You've received it. It says, believe it, and you, it goes on, and it said, it shall be yours. The Greek means future, will be, shall come to pass. So God's not a man that he should lie. It has to come to pass. The key to receiving what you ask for prayer is to believe. Here's where the enemy wants to uh, derail you, to have faith in. Jesus already tied prayer to confession, so in essence, to have faith in what God has said. So when we work on the believe part tonight, I'm going to teach you on what that means. In essence, you could, I, I, if I start now, I've got 20 more pages. So I, I'm just going to save it for tonight. Is that okay? Can I work on your faith tonight? Because I thought I was going to get to the fun part. I thought I was going to get to the fun part of believe. I was going to break it down. Because what we call faith is not faith at all. And I'm going to break it down and show you how to get that belief in you. So that you're going to see answered prayers. Because you think God's just, you know, favoring this person or favoring that person. But the enemy wants you frustrated. The enemy wants you to forfeit. But I'm telling you, when you hold on to your prayer and you speak to that mountain, that mountain will have to be cast out into the sea and removed because when you pray and you believe you receive and it shall come to pass it has to so you have to stand the only person that can stop it from coming to pass is you so it's what we call self-place embargoes you put an embargo it's like you're canceling so what happens is when you pray but then you turn around and cancel out your prayer because you're speaking against the very thing you just prayed for so I'm going to help build you up with faith so that you're so full of faith that you're brimming over. But I had to do something today. I had to, I had to set some things in order. Because setting in order means that you recognize as the blood-bought church of Jesus that you were designated for prayer. That your most powerful weapon is prayer. And you can't separate prayer from the Word of God and you can't separate the Word of God from who God is. So you recognize that. Now, there's a lot of legalities and technicalities I can teach you. But I came to let you know something. That the moment we make this house, or any house, or any of us, any kind of house outside of a house of prayer, we have designated it for something that was not its original intention. And we're sitting there going, why isn't our game working? Because you don't have a basketball. You've got an egg. And you throw in something. And go, why is my game working? Because you've changed the original intention of what its purpose was. Did you get anything out of the word today? Yeah. Come on, stand up on your feet. I just feel, I feel, um, I feel called to repentance. And repentance doesn't mean, man, I'm wrong, I got called, or I'm sorry. Repentance is I change my mind, I change my direction, I go back to the original place of departure. You have to recognize if, if your call is to pray, then the enemy's going to fight everything for you to pray. Every time I designate myself to go on a fast or prayer, you know, I can go all day and not eat, for real. Like, I just get busy and working. The moment I say I'm on fast, I am starving from the, the minute I wake up. I'm telling you, the minute I go, okay, this is my hour, I'm going into prayer. It's like, I will get a phone call and I know, don't even answer it, don't even answer it. Because it's going to be something that I have to resolve with some kind of crazy urgency. or so, And I just have to decide, you know what? This is my time and nothing comes before God. Amen. Nothing. You, you've got to turn your phone off. You, you've got to don't jump up in the morning and look and go, your to-do or post on your Instagram first. You, you've got to get up and say, if it's 10 minutes, if it's 20, if it's an hour, I'm going to pray. You need to come here early and be in prayer. It's your responsibility. The way the service turns out, you go, man, that's dependent on you, Pastor Paula. I'm doing my part. 
I'm studying the word. I'm in the word rightly dividing it. I'm praying. But it's not all on one person. Well, why isn't that happening? Why isn't this happening? It's pretty easy. Because when we start praying the way and become the house of prayer, results just are easy. Let me tell you something. I, I'm, I'm, he, he always gets frustrated that I use him as an example, but I'll use him anyway. My son, who's now a pastor, married for six years with a beautiful daughter and is a homeowner. At one day, was an atheist at it. That's a long way atheist to pastor that's not like from here to here that's here to here shaking his fist not not going through a phase brad's academic he's he's academic many different degrees as y'all already know <laughs> that's from here to here you know what happened why that happened thank you because a mama not a pastor a mama a mama, not a pastor, a mama refused to stop praying. Don't you ever give up on your children. Don't you ever give up on your promises from God. Don't you ever give up. Pray over yourself. You know, people tell me all the time, I'm praying for you, pastor, and I hope you are. I pray, but I know one thing, I'm praying for myself. I'm praying for my marriage. Come on, I'm praying for my family. I'm praying for this church. I'm praying for our community. I'm praying for our nation. I I'll go a step further. Y'all get mad, but I'm going to say it. I'm praying for our president. And obviously it went viral this past week. And it set news media off. And news media was saying, this should make the church wake up. News media was saying, this is strange. That's what they said. This is an odd occurrence to pray. When they say this is strange, we've lost our power. It's not strange to pray. Everything. Guys, there was a time this nation had, I mean, I was not born again. I didn't go to church. But you know what I remember when I was in first and second grade? We had to say the Pledge of Allegiance. And we prayed. And I'm not talking about a moment of silence. Then like I was about sixth or seventh grade. This is telling my age now. And then we, we said the Pledge of Allegiance and we had a moment of silence. And then we stopped saying the Pledge of Allegiance. And then there wasn't even a moment of silence. And now we have killings and gangs and drugs. And probably about 10 minutes, no, I'm just kidding, but seriously, I mean, how much teaching do you have compared to the problem? Why? You start removing prayer from a family, from a church, from anything, I can tell you the outcome. There's no way to have power because prayer is the presence of God being invoked in your life, being invoked in that environment, being invoked in everything. So here's the repentance today, guys, and we're through. Repentance is, man, Pastor Paul, it's not that my heart's not right. Because I know that every year, if you're at New Destiny, your heart's right. It's a good church, good people. It's maybe we get lazy. Maybe we get too busy. Maybe we get too preoccupied. Maybe we get distracted. But how many of you say, I could amp it up? Pastor Paul, I need to repent. I need, I need to change some things. Amen. How many of you not only will repent, but will make a commitment? A commitment. Lift that hand. It's so easy. Your pastor gets distracted. Your pastor get, gets sometimes too busy. And you know what? It's cost me every time. Every time it will cost you something in your life. So, Father, right now with these hands lifted, lift those hands. We make a fresh covenant and commitment to you. We repent for making your house anything but what you intended it to be. God, let us come back and seek you with fervency. God, let us make this first and foremost a house of prayer, for that's what you declared it to be. Let us make our families and our homes a place of prayer, God. 
Let us make our schools and our community and our nation a place of prayer. Father, I just believe that you're raising up a strong army and that with repentance and, and recognizing where we've missed it and where we've fallen short, we'll return to you, oh God. So today, let our life not spiritually look silly like trying to play basketball with an egg. Let us come back in alignment and let us be a people of prayer. In Jesus' name, and everybody said, amen. I believe God will do it. Come on, and I believe great is going to be the reward. And I believe you're going to see whatsoever you ask. Now ask large. Don't be asking for small. Ask large. Ask God for nations and stuff. Ask God for, to use you for greatness. Ask him for this city. Amen. Just keep praying and keep pressing in. I want to give you an opportunity to bring an offering to the Lord. And part of our prayer, one of the prayers is prayer of worship. There, 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 and part of that is an offering. One of the greatest things I think you go, well, I just thought prayer was my words. It's inclusive of that. But it's also inclusive of your acts of faith. And I think one of the greatest acts of faith is bringing an offering to God. So I want you to bring an offering for the house of God. Come on, for the house of God. And this simply says, God, I dedicate this as a sacrifice for your house. Make your checks payable to New Destiny Christian Center. Pastor Doug, come dismiss you. I sure do love you, and I'll see you guys tonight.